Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to look at Ohm's law, particularly the relationship between voltage, current and resistance. So let's get started. Now this video follows on from the theory video on the Ohm's law experiment, and it says that there are two ways to form an equation from the results of the Ohm's law experiment, which are graphically and mathematically. So we can use the graph from the Ohm's law experiment to work out an equation relating voltage, current and resistance, or we can use the symbols for Ohm's law that we saw V is directly proportional to I in order to do it. So we'll look at the graphical method first and then we'll look at the mathematical method. So for the graphical method the first thing you want to do is choose two points on the line of best fit on the voltage current graph that are far apart. So this would give you two points x1 y1 and x2 y2. You would then use those two points to calculate the gradient of the line using m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which you might remember from maths. It then says that the gradient of the line gives resistance. So if I'm using this graph to calculate the gradient, I would pick one point over here, and I'd pick one point over here, and I would then do my y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to find the gradient there. And the gradient value would tell me the resistance. Now the key thing to know here is that on a straight line, the gradient is going to be the same at all points, which means the resistance is going to be the same at all points, because we're saying that the gradient of this line of best fit is the resistance. So this would give us a value for the resistance, and this should be equal to the resistance value of the resistor that you used in the Ohm's law experiment. What you could then do is add another column of voltage divided by current to the table of results. You can then compare the gradient value with the values from the voltage divided by current column, and it says that these should be roughly the same. So if we look back at our table for the Ohm's law experiment, that was this thing here, where we have the average voltage values and the current values here. And so if we were to add another column on the end here of voltage divided by current, then we're saying that the gradient value would be roughly equal to all of these values of voltage divided by current, excluding the one for zero, zero, because that one doesn't really count. So I could get each of my voltage divided by current values by doing the average voltage divided by the current. And because we're saying that the values in that final column of voltage divided by current will be roughly equal to the gradient value that you get from the graph, then this tells us that the resistance is equal to the voltage divided by current because we're saying the gradient is the resistance. Or in other words, if we rearrange this, we get V equals IR. And this is the equation that you'll get relating voltage, current and resistance on the relationship sheet in the exam. So we get V equals IR where V is voltage measured in volts, I is current measured in amperes, and R is the resistance measured in ohms. There is another way to do this though using the mathematical method, and this is using a mathematical trick. What we can do is start with Ohm's law in the form of symbols, which is voltage is directly proportional to the current I. And then what we want to do is get this into an equation that we can use with an equal sign. So if you want to introduce an equal sign here instead of the directly proportional sign, what you need to do is multiply the thing on the right hand side by a constant. So we have V equals a constant times I, and our constant here is actually the resistance, because we said, remember, that for an ohmic conductor with this straight line through the origin graph, the gradient is going to be the same at all points. And because the gradient is resistance, then resistance is the same at all points, or resistance is constant, is another way of saying that. So we have V equals R times I, or if we swap that round, we get V equals IR. So this is an important equation that you need to be able to use, as it comes up a lot in both the National 5 and the Higher Physics course. Now you you don't need to be able to do the graphical or the mathematical methods to show this equation, you just need to be able to use the equation. And just to show you a quick simulation of how the variables change in this formula, we've got V equals IR here, and if I keep my resistance value the same, but I increase my voltage, you'll see that the current increases as well. But if I decrease my voltage, then the current also decreases. But we also said there was an inverse relationship between current and resistance based on their definitions. So current is going to do the opposite to resistance. So if we were to increase the resistance value, then our current decreases. But if we decrease our resistance value, then the current increases. So the final thing to be aware of is that this tells us that resistance is a constant for ohmic conductors like resistors, which makes sense since the gradient of a line is the same at all points. The greater the resistance, the smaller the current, if the voltage is fixed. And what this is really telling us is that the greater the resistance, the smaller the current, if the voltage is fixed. But we've also seen that the voltage is going to change with the current, and they're both going to change in the same way. So it's very important to remember that for an ohmic conductor like a resistor, resistance stays the same. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.